I'm Sequoia with Project Tree Collard here in the urban jungle of Berkeley, California at the original Project Tree Collard farm. I'm now farming up in Grass Valley, but I come and take care of this farm as well. And today I'm showcasing the purple tree collard. Do you see how huge these are? One of the things I love so much about purple tree collards is their ability to survive. Like they are really, really tough. They survive drought and full sun and heat in the summers. And so that's really wonderful. And also this, the flavor of the leaves, it's very, very nutty. And it kind of brings a special interest to your cooking as opposed to a uh, annual collard, which I find a bit more bland. And some of the other tree collards like Merritt and Jolly Green are a bit more um, like the annual collard. So this has a more complex flavor. And also I love the purple colors, particularly in the winter, which it's no longer. It's just absolutely beautiful to have these dark purples. And sometimes when the leaves are getting old and, and falling off, they turn a sort of orangey color. But the purple tree colored plants are really quite pest free. I do find in spring there's some aphids. In the summer there's some white fly which lives on the underside, makes little whitish circles, and then you see a little tiny fly, it often flies off. But, um, and then there's the cabbage moth, which it, um, most people have a problem with, with their brassicas. So they're about that big, big as a half dollar or so. And they're a whitish yellow color. So they lay eggs and those larvae, those little green caterpillars get bigger and bigger and bigger and they really can decimate young plants. But with plants this size, I don't, I don't see any decimation whatsoever going on here or in my Grass Valley farm. My Grass Valley farm, I have some deer issues still and some rat issues. <laughs> so they do get heavily eaten up there. But here in Berkeley, um, they're very, very easy and they're year round and they're perennial. So you buy one or two or three or you get the cuttings and you propagate a few and you're gonna have them year round for many years to come. And if ever you wanna start over because they've gotten kind of woody and are growing every which way, you can take cuttings and start over afresh and then you get those big beautiful leaves again. So it's, it's this wonderful thing. They're just a delight, they're nutritious, they're consistent, they're easy and they're purple. And that lends an interest to the landscape. There are two ways to grow them. You can grow them staked as the ones are behind me. Um, there are tea posts in here that they're tied to. And you can also grow them in the ground and you can just prune them and, and maintain them at you know various heights at some people's gardens. I've seen them about this high and over here I've got a patch that just kind of always stays about waist high. So, so that both styles are great. Like if you want some privacy from a neighbor or um, providing privacy here in this case for this little building here, um, it's great to let them grow tall and, and you get more food from them if you let them grow vertically. So this is the purple tree colored I'm showcasing today and it's the original one I started with as a cutting here at this very farm about 20 years ago. And I just had it and loved it and it just grew beautifully and I harvested year round and anytime I didn't have any different kales or lettuces or other greens, I would just go, ah, oh, the tree collards, yay. I'm so happy these are here. Eventually over time I realized these aren't readily available in a lot of places in the United States. You can't get them. In fact, even here, you can't reliably go to a nursery and get them. So it became my mission to make tree collards available to more folks in the United States. And then my mission became to, to cross-pollinate them. Purple tree collards happen to rarely bloom, but when they do, there is a playground of cross-pollination of this tree collard with other brassicas or other tree collards that are blooming in the same time. So you could get a spicy mustard green, for example, if those two happen to be blooming at the same time and cross pollinate. So it's endless fun there. Hi, so here on the right-hand side, I have leaves from a larger plant that is growing in some shade and it's about a year old. So when they're young, they tend to make larger leaves and in the shade, they tend to make larger leaves. You'll notice that the leaves are very, very green with these um, purple veins all the way up. And then the one on the left is grown in more sun 
and these plants are about three or four years old and they're still really wonderful but if you want to go for the very very large leaves then you need to replant your plants from cuttings quite frequently purple tree collards are perennial in zones 8a on up there's some parts of humid humid hottest parts of florida where they tend to expire in august so cuttings need to be taken and and repropagated or brought in in the hottest parts of the summer and the same goes true for colder climates like 7a and b where they're marginally grown a lot of people are successful but some are not and then people are growing them in maine new hampshire vermont uh, illinois like all over and and they're doing special things like taking cuttings and bringing them in the winter growing in grow bags with handles and bringing them in or growing in a greenhouse so these are definitely able to grow in a lot more climates than 8a on up also they're particularly resist uh, resilient if you grow from seed so if you grow from seed you're going to get climate adapted purple tree collards they're not going to look identical to these they're going to be different they might be more roughly less roughly less purple more purple higher you know just different have different attributes because they do cross pollinate easily with other members of the bra the brassica family or the broccoli family they're a wonderful wonderful plant they're one of my favorites i highly recommend them if you're in one of those zones um you know just for the color and the screening and the, the edible hedge nature of this plant is really valuable in the landscape for more information, you can go to projecttreecollar.org where we sell plants, cuttings, and seeds. And also, please hit the subscribe button. It helps encourage me to make more content on all things tree collared and homesteading. Thanks for watching.